So last time I promised that the next video would be setting up decals and maybe going over some painting tips or something. I've decided that that's a bad idea because if I were to put on some of the decals here, I might be covering up some of the surfaces I need for uh, actually working with servos and whatnot. So I figured the better thing to do would be to get my, uh, at least the external parts of the servos and the horns and whatever glued into place. At least, yeah, probably glued into place. And then um, go from there uh, after that, maybe do with the externals like the decals before I glue everything together. So to start with, I'm going to look at the rudder here. So the rudder is gonna have a servo here. I'm gonna glue it into place. I'm going to need to make sure that this is aligned with the servo horns. Okay. I'm going to have to glue this guide. There's a guide here covering the push rod. I'm going to have to glue that into place into a spot that it's going to actually meet up with the control horn on the uh, rudder. So um, I'm going to have to do that. In order to do this, I have to make sure that this is aligned properly with my uh, with my servo. So in order to do that, I have to put on the servo arm. Right, and uh, that's going to go on to the top here. Problem is, I can't just put it on there any old way. It's got to be centered so that when it's in motion, this is the center point, and this will push the rotor as uh, a rudder, and this will pull the rudder. Right, so we're going to have to set that up so that the uh, arm is pointing at a 90 degree uh, angle when the servo is centered. In order to do that, I'm going to use a uh, servo test kit. And it's just a little device that's going to take a battery input, and then it'll control up to four servos out. I'm just going to do one at a time, and then you can use this to set various angles. But I'm just going to set it to neutral. There's a button that'll force it to go to neutral. When working with these servo kits, you're going to want to make sure that you have the correct speed on the pulse speed. Um, I had originally tried it on 760 and I got a lot of noise and jitter out of my uh, my servos but if I go to 1520 everything behaves fine. So this is a 1520. I'm not sure exactly. I'm sure it says someplace in the manual and that that's what you should be using. But Make sure you choose the correct value. In order to use that I need battery input Battery is not going to connect directly to it. Um, probably don't want it to anyway. This is a six volt, uh, um, a twelve volt battery, and this is only going to let you input maybe, uh, three. Well, it'll take twelve volts, but the servos probably won't. So I'm going to use an ESC, the same ESC that I'm going to use for the airplane, as an intermediary between the battery and the servo controller. So I'll put the ESC, connect the ESC, make sure that I have it lined right. So the white is the control. And so it goes like this. This battery must be dead. I realized what I was doing. wasn't that the battery was dead, so I was using the wrong side of the ESC. I hope I didn't damage anything. Um, the battery next to the ESC, this would be the output to the uh, motor. And this is probably why I should not have put this type of connector on. But I did. Um, this is the lead that actually brings power and takes control from the receiver. So this is the one that has the uh, 5 volt output and so that's the one that I need to connect into here see there's a battery there's an indicator here this is manual and so if I were to put the servo arm in place 
I can move it around like this once I plug it in. Man, I'm not doing good today. So you can see here, I'm moving it around and it's not centered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the control arm. I'm going to go to the second option here for on this controller that's that's uh, neutral. So this will move the controller into the neutral position. And then put the arm in at a 90 degree angle. So I'm going to put it in this way based on how it's going to insert into the model. That'll mean that when I that'll be changing the rudder back and forth. Servo is centered. I'm done with the circuit. I can take it apart. I will actually do this with each of the servos when I get to inserting them. All right now to position this rod. Um, I'm going to push this out quite a bit. I'm going to put the servo in. Alright, so that's the servo rod in. I know approximately where it's going to have to go. I'm going to align it here. So this is letting me know I probably did something wrong as far as placing it. Probably placing this control horn in the wrong direction. Um, I'm barely able to get any uh, of the metal through the control horn. So I'm going to try to redirect it a little bit. Maybe if I put it this way. This looks like it'll fit. What I'll do is I'll take a, uh, a little something and bend it. Might not be the best way to get the little S curve in there. Um, if I recall, there are tools for it. But hopefully, that'll keep it in. Um, might end up gluing it or something. Hope it doesn't actually pull it. Maybe it's too taut. But we shall see. Maybe I'll angle this too to give myself even more room. We shall see. So, we have some options here. Um, this isn't nearly important uh, at this stage as getting this protector into place. So now that I have things, know, I know where they are. I'm just going to disconnect and then start to glue this in. So I'm just going to mark here. where the ends of this protector go. So that when I glue it in, I'll end up putting it in roughly the same spot. So last time, I uh, was recording, I had an issue with my video, so I lost some of, the, some of uh, what I had recorded. So I'm just going to do a review of what I had done. Um, I was gluing in the uh, guard, guard for the rudder's servo push rod. And so I made sure that the ends would fit. I glued in uh, the support into the side of the fuselage here, and I let it to dry. This has been drying for a couple days. It probably only took about 20 minutes before it could have been handled. 
I think by the end I will actually also add a tape layer to it. But for now, that's all that's been done. The next step is to glue in this bar for uh, supporting the wing here. And so I'm going to basically do the same thing that I did for the fuselage. I'm going to take this bar out. I'm going to put some glue into here, make sure it gets into the surface. And then put the rod in, tape it in, and let it dry. I think part of the trick here is to put the glue in, but don't let too much of it go. We don't want glue all over the place. We want to do it fairly quick so that we can get the carbon, the uh, spar in there, the support bar in there before it starts to dry. Just going to rub the glue so that there's a little bit of a a layer on top. I'm just going to put a little bit more down. It's because if this dries on top of it, it will form a double layer. So a layer holding it down and a layer holding it from getting pulled out. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to let that stay aside and dry. So I needed to um, cut a, a little bit of room out here on my uh, servo to, I mean, to allow my servo uh, room to move. Um, it came in and was rubbing up against the side here when the uh, servo arm was in place. So I'm going to Take a knife and cut that out. All right, I think that'll be plenty. I just needed a little bit to give it room to move. And now, I'll glue this bar into place that holds up the, uh, the fuselage here and it stays pretty much in the center, there's a little indentation start to back. Okay, I'm going to add some tape. With this, I'll probably let it dry, put another coat, let it dry, and then I'll put the two pieces together. Now I'll eventually glue this into place. I'll just put uh, some dabs of glue over these arms. Um, but I don't want to do that until I have this in place, like I know for sure exactly where it's going to stand. Um, there's still a chance that I might rotate it or play around with it a little bit. Um, so for now, I will leave it unglued so I have a little bit more flexibility. So the next things I can glue into place is I can start to glue the control horns. And so I'll do the control horn for the um, elevator here first. For this, I'm going to do just a little dab here, make sure that they're all nice and covered. paper and just paint over it. I'll do the same for the alerons. I 
you recall in the last episode, I'm putting the control horns for the ailerons with the horn facing towards the edge of the wings. And then I think the last thing I'm going to do in this episode is uh, just more cutting out. These things are the same size as my rudder one, so I'm going to, uh, I'm sorry, my um, elevator. So real port, so I'm just going to cut a little bit more. Alright, yet another video problem. Um, just wanted to go over what I did. I think you saw me putting on one of the control horns. I just glued in both of the control horns for the um, ailerons. I had the elevator glued on. I'm going to do the, the rudder control horn here. Alright, those are all the pieces glued together. That's been this episode, and thanks for watching.